let's talk a little bit more about the metaverse because today with us we have Dennis Ferdinand and Adrian Rizjad from the Sun Eater record label. They were going to share their experiences in joining the metaverse and maybe give us a little bit more insight. Thank yes. you guys for joining us. Welcome to the Sea Morning Show. Hello, thank, thank you. you for having us. Perfect. Yes, we're very excited to yeah. see you. This, this is an interesting, we had an interesting talk just now, behind mm -hmm. this. I'm sure it's going to come out. More in depth, right. <laughs> more in depth. But, but let's uh, talk a little bit about uh, how Sun Eater first joined the metaverse and why did you guys decide to go this, uh, this route? Because it's not very common right now in the music industry. Yeah. So we believe that anywhere under the sun is our playground to tell stories. So we're trying to broaden our vision into the metaverse. Okay. It's like um, we're trying to inspire the music industry in Indonesia and we're trying to represent that industry to the world. Nice, very nice. Whole new world indeed, right? Yeah. It's <laughs> a whole new world. Indeed. Worlds. I mean, there are virtual concerts, right? But uh, many might be unfamiliar with the metaverse. How do you introduce a virtual reality platform to a wider public? Because the metaverse itself is still very specific, right? And yeah. I'll be honest, I haven't really fully wrapped my head Yeah, around. me too. Because we're so familiar with our world. There's one yeah. world and you can physically put things where, or, or purchase things and build things. But in the metaverse, it's just so much more limitless and you yep. can have many yeah. worlds as well. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. yeah, so the idea is like, if you ever watch uh, Ready Player One, Mm -hmm. It's similar Correct. like oh, that. Oh yeah, that's right. And just think about the 3D version of internet. When you can show anything like that you own uh, the rights uh, properly there. Right. Like if you have music, you can play your own music later on Metaverse. If you have the art, then you can show that. Right. And you can build a home like virtually. It's basically like your virtual life there. When you can create a unique avatar, something like That's that. That's actually a very good way to look at it, like a 3D version of the yeah. internet. Yeah, no, no, I'm, 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 because it's such a vast world, right? You see that right there in that picture, mm -hmm. you have to have the gadget that makes it specific. I Without want, the right. gadget, you can't actually enter the metaverse, right? Yes. So it's like uh, you're shopping in that, in that verse for you. So mm -hmm. it's like if you want to have a house, you have to buy the house, right? Yeah. And then if you have the NFTs, then you can hang the NFTs and you can buy interiors and stuff. It's like literally everything that we do here, but in the metaverse. Yeah, it's almost like, a, it's like, it's like one of those uh, uh, games, but then it's like real, it's yeah, real. It's not a game, <laughs> it's real. real, real yeah. <laughs> so what needs to be prepared, right? to promote the metaverse to the general public because as I mentioned, uh, as we've seen before, it's very specific because it's uh, using a specific platform. Yes, so we're collaborating with uh, Weird Group, uh, the uh, uh, augmented reality and technology mm -hmm. company based uh, in Jakarta. Mm -hmm. And we can say anything um, technically for now, but we're so excited for that, like embrace the future, what the future holds for us. Mm -hmm. I mean, like uh, we're going to help the concert in Metaverse, like with our artists, and we're going to collaborate with another Indonesian talents as well. Just quick follow-up questions: um, Holding concerts in the Metaverse is it any different than the concert, virtual concerts already held in games? Mm -hmm. Because I know that if you want to join the Metaverse, you have the specific gadgets and things like that. Um, in Indonesia, is your crowd, particularly the Sun Eater crowd, is it ready yeah. to embrace the Metaverse? Because uh, what we're always trying to do in Sun Eater is we're always find a new way to create new experience for our fans and audience. So we think that our audience will be ready in maybe a year or so. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they can like be prepared for now. Yeah, never, yeah. never too early to start yeah. preparing yeah. because when it happens, you don't want to be left behind, right? That's yeah. right. right. You want yeah. to be the one moving forward. Right. So, uh, Aldrin, as a musician of the digital era, what strategies have you set to basically fully immerse yourself into the metaverse? Mm, basically, I think uh, first before putting up a strategy to, to enter the metaverse, I think the first thing to do for me as a musician is, that is, to, is to identify uh, what what's different between the offline concert and metaverse concert? And mm -hmm. I think the main difference is that uh, on offline concert there are uh, there are boundaries that I can take into the stage. Mm -hmm. Let's say I have a very wild concept in my mind. Maybe there's a budget, there's a budget strain on that. There's okay. also mm -hmm. a technical strain on that. But maybe but maybe on metaverse since it's more digitalized, I think 
I can bring more more what concepts that I had. Maybe by even when I had that kind of facility, maybe I will even have more what ideas in my mind that I can yeah. bring to the stage. It allows universe. you to think yeah. like even you know of a wider yeah, like it allows think outside me to the think box because you're not louder. you're not kind of held down by oh do we have enough room on the stage? Yeah. How much yeah. is this going to cost production wise? Yeah. We do know production. Yeah. Is such a big cost when it comes yeah, to Yeah, I was yes. just thinking like the craziest stage concepts that you can have. You can have like, I don't know, a lions hanging or flying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it's like, like making creatures, Even right? The sun, yeah. yeah, the sun, right. <laughs> so most musicians, right, Aldrian, enjoy live performances as uh, they can bond with fans face to face. What's your take on this? In the context of the metaverse, yep. how is that going to work? I think that's the challenge. I mean, I love offline concepts as well, mm -hmm. but but I think the main challenge for the musician, for the artist, is to to give the audience a new whole, a whole new concept that which they they feel like oh I think I can immerse myself in this universe and that's our challenge. We need to create the universe that is maybe not equal to offline, but it's it has more value uh, and it's also more valuable for them to to immerse themselves as well. Yeah, that's the, that's the main challenge. I think it's just mindset. You know, like even yeah. when the pandemic started ironically around the same time as this was blowing yeah. up as well we were we had to adjust ourselves to virtual concerts yep not just us but artists as well as the as a crowd we had to get used to there was good things like oh you can i can sit at home and enjoy a concert but there was downsides as well because people really wanted that interaction and i do believe that if you're equipped properly you should be able to have the a similar interaction yeah. although not directly face to face now let's talk a little bit of nfts guys we do know that nft is such a big part of the metaverse we do know that uh, other industries such as gaming has already now inverse immersed himself with M nfts as well now now, for music, it's uniquely interesting because musicians are also now interested in F NFTs because it provides full royalty while putting the artists in control of keeping their intellectual rights because we always know that's such mm -hmm. an issue when it comes to music. So what, about, what, are, what are your guys' thoughts on this? Are you, are you thinking that this is going, to be, is going to eventually happen as well and what will be your role in it? So it's, it's like, um, it's very cool since you can put the price like you can value your music there. You can get a new way to interact with fans. Let's say 20 years ago, we were we were going to the record store mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. buy our first Westlife or Britney Spears album. <laughs> and now here in F NFT, we can get like exclusive content that you own. Uh, oh right. You you own properly there. Yeah. 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 And then yeah, it's it's fun. Like it's like you, you literally own something out of that in. That, that artist when you yeah. buy when you buy the uh, when you buy the artist music for instance you, yeah, you can actually like share of the actual sure. music yeah so that's 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 a whole another level of fan <laughs> yeah and and you could you know Love uh, it. my friend actually taught me because I haven't officially bought my first NFT but I've been interested I've been looking and my friend said do your due diligence and don't just buy an F NFT for the sake of uh, never do it just to make money yeah do it because you yes. believe in what they they're doing yeah uh, for example if you like forestry there's well there's NFTs that the money will go towards the forestry that's right when it comes to music you can totally just support the artists that you like or the labels that you like and I think that gives not only the audience a deeper connection with the artists as well but it also gives artists like we said control is such a big thing that had been argued about for years when it comes to music and yeah. artists when it was a major label that was controlling all of music you know musicians didn't feel like they had enough ownership of their own stuff in fact it was mostly the labels that it, but now that we've seen a lot of uh, more independent uh, musicians these days with all of these platforms it's nice to see the musicians being able to have the music back into their hands again yeah but of course it has to be you know um, it has to be there has to be a certain deal with the label and I think that was important that the as long as a musician owns like the majority of the shares and the royalty, right? Or, or uh, the I think the label legally uh, lets them lets them have it. I think that's that's beneficial. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. All right, guys, we're gonna take a short break here, but hey, I did mention something about a performance at the top. Yeah. Right? So when we return, Aldrian Ristjad will grace us with a special performance. You're not gonna want to miss it. Stay with us here on the Sea Morning Show. We'll be right back.